Coming in at number 53 on the 2024 Locked On Senators NHL Draft Rankings from the Ontario Hockey League, it's centerman Luke Misa. And if there's one thing I can say about Luke Misa is that his progression is ascending rapidly. Yeah, and he's one of those rare players, Ross. You don't often see when we're doing draft profiles, players that have three years in the OHL, let alone three full seasons in the OHL in his first rookie year in 62 games, 26 points. Then next year, 64 games, 43 points. So uh, double up his points there. And then last season in 66 games, he had 26 goals. So doubles his goal total from the year before 55 assists, which happened to be a Mississauga Steelheads record franchise record for assists and 81 points and Important to note too, Ross, in all three of his seasons in the OHL, he was in the playoffs all season, every single year. So this kid's put some miles on those skates uh, so far in his early career. He's undersized. He's 5'10", 170 pounds. An early birthday, as Pilsy alluded to, being able to play those three years. He's a November birthday. The calendar flips mid-September. And he's a bit of a hit and miss in the rankings as well. Only four of our seven entities had him in their rankings. The average is 49.5. Scott Wheeler's the highest on him at 40. Elite Prospects at 41. McKean's at 50. And Bob McKenzie down at 67. So Craig Button didn't rank him. Chris Peters didn't rank him. Corey Pronman. They just did not rank this player. And I think not to start negative, and I want to talk about his strengths, of which there are many, but I think the one thing you can say about Luke Misa, he produces. Okay? Now that we have that aside, will it translate? And that's the question I think a lot of scouts are asking them where it's like, okay, is he going to be an elite AHL player or is he going to be able to translate this skill? Because he's not going to play, I don't think, in a fourth line role at the NHL level. He just doesn't have the size, the four checking that you would, you would, you would want. The other guys we're going to talk about today could probably have that B or C yep. game where they end up in a checking role. And you know what? Maybe you took them a little higher, but they're going to be NHLers. Where I think if Luca Misa hits in the NHL, 40 plus points. And if he doesn't, he might never play a game. Yeah, I mean, it's interesting, Ross. You you pose the question, will he be able to kind of bring that skill to the next level? And I'll tell you a reason why I think he might be able to do that. Scott Wheeler has mentioned that Misa is one of the better skaters in this entire draft. Now, We've already covered a couple undersized players. Uh, Galvis, Thomas Galvis was one of them. And the discussion is, okay, you're smaller than everyone. Hockey's a physical game. How are you going to overcome that? And the way Misa has found a way to overcome that is through being an excellent skater. This guy plays with pace. He's fast out there. That's why he's able to rack up all these points and get those assists because defensemen are having a tough time just keeping up with them and he's creating open space for his teammates and then he's able to hit them with nice passes uh he led the mississauga steelheads in points so he's a huge part of their success and he's a creative playmaker with a pass first mentality now that's pass first mentality is both a good and a bad thing uh wheeler was saying in his write-up of him that sometimes he just wishes that misa would rip that puck himself instead of looking for that extra pass or trying to do a spinorama and hit a guy back door and just all these crazy things right which in junior if you have the ability and the the vision for it sure you can beat a couple high schoolers that are just entering the OHL and maybe you're mismatched with defenders on a shift or two. That'll happen. But moving up in competition levels, you're not going to be able to get those same breaks and those risky, creative playmaking plays that he loves to do. They're not going to translate as often as they have been. We like to look at different rankings and we also like to look at different progressions within the season. And at the midterm, the NHL Central Scouting had him as the 45th highest ranked North American skater. Where do you think he finished the year? 55th? 76th. Oh, okay. So that raises an eyebrow to me. Why is he dropping so far in the rankings? He can't say, oh, just a few guys jumped him. No, that is a substantial drop. So I'm curious. I would be 
a little nervous. Now, in the fourth round, Ottawa's got those three picks. I would be okay with one of those three. I don't think not, he's making it that far. So, not my guy then. Not my guy. Pilsy, how many stars? And that's fair, Ross. Um, look, one thing that I think it needs to be valued a lot with prospects is speed and pace. And Misa has both of those. He plays a fast game. He's able to win uh, loose puck battles because he's beaten out guys in races. And he back checks, four checks with speed, and he keeps the game going. So if he has the right line mates, I think he can have success. I don't know where he's going to get selected. Um, I think it's going to be sometime in the in the second round, though, Ross. I do think... Th- Scouts are going to see his talent and they're going to bank on that, especially the speed. I like his potential, but don't think he makes sense for the Sens. That's why I'm going to give him a three and a half stars. Three and a half stars for Luke Misa, who comes in at number 53 on our 2024 NHL draft rankings. For more prospect profiles, go check out Locked On Senators on YouTube. 